All right, good morning, YouTube. In today's video, we're going to be discussing how to choose the best training split for you. So this is a discussion where a lot of people will say, what's the best way to optimize muscle building? What's the best way to optimize strength gain? And there are tangible recommendations that we can make. But the thing is, this is a very quick, easy service level question. And one thing I always advocate is the quality of the answer you will get will be determined by the quality of your question. If you just have one question to decide your training, um, like, like the choices you make in your training, then that's going to actually hurt you, not help you. You want to ask questions. You want to ask questions about yourself. The more information you have about yourself, you want to uh, address and then move forward. Now, you don't need to know everything. You just need to know enough to actually take a step and then you're gonna get more information as you continue to run programs. So don't. this is not a way to say um, analysis by paralysis is justified because you need to know things. No, it's know enough and then execute, learn something and then repeat that process. So let's get started. Oh. All right, so key points. Some things that I just wanna kinda of go over is the fact that there is no one best split for everyone and every goal. Two people who are strength focused are going to have very different training programs and they should. Just because they are both wanna get stronger, let's say in the squat, bench, and deadlift, that doesn't mean they should train the same even though the goal is the same. One person might be more averse to frequent squats while the other person might actually benefit from frequent deadlifting. These are things that need to be taken into consideration. So it's not just enough to say, what's the best way to train? Or what is the best split for strength? What is the best split for, for size? It is much better to ask, with my goal of size, and I'm making sure that you always in, uh, include your, the stipulation of what is the goal, with my goal of size, what is the best split? And then you can like start getting other questions like, well, given that I enjoy X, what is the best split for that to, or to accommodate that? And then you're going to kind of like get a list of questions that all have these give and take. Some will contradict each other, but eventually, but what you'll be able to do is you're going to make an educated decision based on your priorities. So that's why it's important to understand there's no one best split and it does require some thinking to actually find a split that will satisfy you and your goals. Next, the lifter who trains the longest gets the strongest. So that means when it comes to picking a training program, it should be a training program that you should be able to run over and over again. This is why I really don't like programs that are just 12 week this, six week that, 18 weeks the new PR, because it might deliver on that, pro uh, on that promise. However, it doesn't really do much to teach you how to train for the rest of your life, which is why what I'm starting to realize now with a lot of like uh, other channels and other people that I'm like learning about their training methods is once they found what worked, like they just stuck with that and they ha always have some level of undulation, conjugation and everything like that. So that way, so that way they can continue to train. But generally speaking, once they find a system that works for them, they do that exclusively. Ed Cohn was like that. I think, um, I think, I think his name is Brian Carroll. Like, um, he's behind 1020 life. I believe he's like that. I've only recently like started digging into his work. So I'm, I might be mistaken there, but anyway, once you find what works for you, you just kind of stick with it. Right now, your progress and your program will be limited by your ability to apply consistency and effort. This is what was discussed in the first um, video, the first video of the programming series, because too many people will focus on programming and will use programming as a way to almost remove consistency and effort. They write down this perfect optimized program, but they don't really take into consideration anything that is about consistency. And then they wonder why aren't they making progress? or they write this really nice mathematically congruent and mathematically just like pretty program, but they don't put any effort into it when they're actually in the gym and then they wonder why they don't make any gains. Your progress and your program will be limited by your ability to apply consistency and effort. The reason why it is both of these things is because you can be consistent and if you don't have enough effort, you don't make progress. Or you can put in the world's greatest effort, but if you're not consistent with it, then you will not make progress. So that's why you need both consistency and effort. And the purpose of the training split is to maximize these two variables. So if you have a training split in which sure you're able to work hard, but at the cost of you not being able to be consistent with your training, it's probably not the best one for you. I know that this is kind of like an example here would be like Westside Barbell guys. They had such a wide variety of lifters that they just kind of threw all the eggs at the wall. The ones that didn't break became world champions. So, and the thing is, what is their main thing? Max effort. But the thing is, there was a lack of maximum consistency and that is what should be applied for most people. 
not the genetic elite. The genetic elite will be great if they just try hard, right? But anyway, when you do with your own training, that's what you want to be thinking about. Now, the last part, you have to program for your personal goals, preferences, and tolerances. So like, what can you tolerate in your training? How much volume can you tolerate? How much load can you tolerate? How much frequency? Do you like training frequently? Do you Are you more so focused on size or strength? Because certain decisions will kind of alter how you train. Now, in my personal opinion, I'm a power builder. I truly believe and advocate for the use of free weight exercises, barbells, and everything of that like for everyone. However, for someone who is size focused and maybe has like a mental block with the barbell lifts, I'm not going to force them to use it or I'm not going to force them to use it too much. So what I'll say is like, okay, the reason why I want you to use the barbell bench press is because out of all the chest movements, it's the movement that you can overload the most. And we know that tension builds muscle. This is the movement that allows you to lift the most amount of tension. And then you can use other movements such as dumbbells, machines, and whatnot to get more volume, get more range of motion, whatever else. But I do want you to progress on your barbell bench press. And then I'll just have them do it once a week. And then everything else is just every um, whatever they wanna do because their main goal is size. So strength progression, it doesn't need to be it doesn't need to be so quick as long it does trend as long as it does trend upward that's all i care about but the thing is it's more so of a metric if anything but at the same time i do think that's important but regardless personal goals preferences and tolerances should be included in your decisions when you make your training program or if you decide to choose a training program so when it comes to these considerations and like i said earlier the quality of the answer you get will be based on the quality of question you ask what is the goal one thing that's really important to understand is the fact that when it comes to like exercises you select or decisions you make in your training, good advice given at a bad time is not bad advice. So it might be a good exercise. It might be a good frequency. It might be a good recommendation. But if it doesn't line up with your goal, it is not a good recommendation anymore. And too many people will get caught up with, you know, all the content that's out there. And they, and they like kind of lose sight of the fact that there's always a stipulation with everything. If your goal is this, if you are struggling with this, if this is your issue, then this is a good recommendation. But they don't hear that first part. They just hear, this is a good recommendation. They try to implement it. It's not working out for them. And they wonder why. So that is why you need to ask yourself, what is the goal? What are you trying to do? Consistency and effort require direction. You can be consistent, but you can be moving in the wrong way. And now like... Like, where are you going? You're not reaching your goal. You can be applying all this effort, but it's not actually building you up. It's breaking you down. That's why when you have these two variables, consistency and effort, the goal provides it direction. So that's why you need to be very mindful of that. So does your split, your exercise selection, frequency, set, and rep ranges make sense for you or your goal? If those things are absent from your training program, there's a lot of things that are going to happen with it. And the worst part about it is that it's not going to work all that well for you. So you want to just limit that. You just want to cut down on that and get that out of the way immediately. The next thing you want to consider is how can you be the most consistent with it? Is your training program sustainable for you? Now, sustainability is just one variable of that consistency. Sustainability is your ability to recover from your training, but also enjoy it. This is something that I feel like uh, can get its own video on its own, but you need to be able to enjoy your training. If I have a client and they tell me, I don't like this movement, I don't like this split, then I won't do it. Like just quite simple because like it's uh, not just boundaries. It's more like because I know that their consistency will suffer as a result of implementing this, I'm going to do my best to go around it. Now, there might be some things where it's just like, hey, man, like uh, you want to lose weight, you got to move more and you got to eat less. Like, I know you don't like to, but you got to do it. Sometimes the goal is going to supersede your preferences, but other times your preferences and your goal actually don't butt heads. So then if that's the case, why do you need to like create this obstacle for yourself? But those are that's something that it'll be like a case by case kind of basis, right? Next is, can you apply effort and progress? So the thing is, don't confuse hard work with progress. So this is kind of like cut off right here, but one thing that I want people to understand is that you can work hard and not progress, but you cannot make progress without hard work. So what does that mean? You can go to the gym and, dis and like just destroy yourself. Just, just do more reps, more sets, more weight than anyone else in the gym, than, anyone, and than, than any other time in your life, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to wake up the next morning and look like um, 
at a seven time Mr. Olympia and become the governor of California. That's not what's going to happen if you just work super hard for 24 hours and then go from there. That's not how training works. Training requires you to work hard in consistent doses and then move forward. So years and years and years of hard work. And that is going to turn off a lot of people. And that's why a lot of people will sell bullshit. No, you need to work fucking hard. You need to work hard for a long ass fucking time. And it's going to take a while, but the thing is, like, is as long it does take a while to look great, but it doesn't take all that much to look good, and it doesn't take, um, and it takes even less to just look better, to be better, to perform better than you are right now. So just think about it that way and just work fucking hard. Loading. So if you prefer to train heavy, probably should train a little bit um, um, behind failure. So maybe one to four reps in reserve. But if you prefer to train lighter or you only have access to light weights, then you should train closer to failure. So one to two reps um, in reserve. So that's kind of like the loading and the proximity to failure right there. Oops. All right, so recoverability. This is a very simple question. Like, can you recover from your training? And recovery is going to be dependent on the person because your ability to recover from certain movement patterns is going to be different from person to person, right? Some people are very resilient when it comes to pressing. They can press three to four times per week and their shoulders, elbows, and everything else will feel fine. Others, if they go past two times per week, not the case. So if you like, you know, find the advice like, oh, if you want to get good at something, just do it more frequently. But then at the same time, if you try doing it more frequently, your body just self-destructs not the best advice for you, right? So that's why you need to temper it with the, the first question, can you recover from your training? Because we know that the body doesn't grow with what we do in the gym, it grows at rest. We just signal the body to grow, but we actually grow at rest, which is why it's important that we actually recover from our training. The example that I use here is frequent squats versus frequent deadlift. In most programs, like they've biased the squat. You squat three days per week. And But the thing is, every time that I do that, it usually hurts more like I get a lot more like knee pains and like uh, pains in my ankles and but with the deadlift I feel fine I've been like I have found that frequent deadlifting doesn't really hurt me all that much in comparison to like how other people would say it would um, there was a time in my life where I actually deadlifted um, three days a week pretty heavy and I was young I was like 18 20 like 18 to 20 doing that and like I was I was able to recover I didn't burn out I actually made progress week to week for about like six months until I um, found something new to do but anyway that's movement frequency next is rate of muscle recovery this is just a fancy way of saying how fast does your muscles recover like I don't know why I wanted to like sound smart there it's 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 just it's not even an official term but anyway muscles will recover faster the more advanced you get so and also muscle recovery will also depend on how heavy you train, how big the muscle is, how close to failure you train. But generally speaking, you're going to find that most muscles will recover either 24 hours, 48 hours, or 72 hours. Obviously, the bigger the muscle, the harder you train, closer to 72, the smaller the muscle, probably closer to 24. And even smaller muscles, even than that, like let's say biceps, rear delts, and like all these really, really small muscles, they might even recover um, within 12 hours. That's why you see some bodybuilders go into back into the gym because those small muscle groups are recovered again and they just want to train them every time they're recovered next is can you consistently can you consistently replicate your effort and improve upon them so one th key factor of recoverability so this is um kind of dipping into like the general adaptation syndrome once you submit your body to a stimulus your body will actually dip down below baseline and then you will enter the super compensation phase in which you recover and now you are able to exhibit a positive um, adaptation to that stress. So you're stronger, you were able to handle more reps. When you, after you recover any of that super conversation, you are able to improve upon your performance. That is something that's really important when it comes to recoverability. Recoverability doesn't just mean I can go back into the gym the next day. No, it actually means when you go back into the gym, not only could you do what you did last time, you could probably do more. And if you can't do more then like, um, there's things that you need to like modify and adjust, but that will be discussed as we continue the programming series and any other video on this channel. Enjoyment. So like I said, this is something that can get its own uh, video, but this is just going to be like the TLDR uh, Cliff Notes version. You will be most loyal to the split you enjoy. One thing I always tell people is like, make it convenient and make sure you like that shit because if you don't like it, you're not going to be loyal to it. It's the same thing with a girlfriend. If you hate your girlfriend, but for whatever reason, you don't have the courage to actually just break up with her, 
you are going to like sacrifice your character and maybe cheat on her. That's not what you want to do. You want to make sure that you commit yourself to a program, to a woman, to a partner, to uh, whatever that you actually like. So that way you can be loyal to them. That's what you want to be doing with your training. So, um, sorry, I think that was a fly there or like those really small ones. But anyway, so how do you like to train? How heavy do you like to train? Me personally, I hate high rep shit. Like <laughs> this is one of the reasons why like, like I'm pretty sure one of the reasons why powerlifting became so popular is the fact that we didn't have to diet as hard and we didn't have to do so many damn reps. So I'm pretty sure that's why so many people started getting into strength training because we just did not like that shit. But then we got fat and realized, okay, I mean, I always liked bodybuilding. It's just hard, but now I'm an adult and I'm just going to get over that, right? That's, that's, that's at least my, um, my experience. But anyway, in your training, if you prefer high reps versus low reps, you can bias your training to do that. You don't need to um, commit yourself to something you don't enjoy. Now, here's the issue. Here's the kicker, though. That only applies if your goal is for muscle. For strength, you will need to lift some heavy shit, so you will need to go pretty low rep. But generally speaking, you're going to find that if you have a goal of strength, you typically enjoy strength. So it's probably not going to be that big of a concern, but it's just something worth noting out. Next is what kind of split do you like? How many days per week do you like to train? Some people I like have trained, they thought to themselves that they're not going to build muscle unless they train six days a week. And that is not true. The key here is find the frequency that you can most sustain and enjoy and maximize that. There's no way to like, you know, like too many people think about optimizing this, optimizing that. The thing is, they forget like optimization and max like uh, like maximizing something typically means that you have something to optimize and maximize in the first place. They try to do it um, like without this, like they try to do, I think it's like a posteriori or something like that, where they have this desire to maximize something, but there's no nothing underlying it. And that's the mistake. You need to make sure that you know, all right, how often do I like to train? How do I maximize that? Not how do I maximize muscle growth? And then you and you read three different articles or 30 different articles telling, telling you four times a week, six times per week. And then you're like, okay, let me do six. That is not optimization. That is not maximizing anything, right? So effort. So find, like this last part, the a key question that you want to think about with effort is, are you able to work hard week in and week out? So this is like, cause like this is consistency has to be a part of this without sacrificing future hard work. If you just work yourself into a hole, the best thing you can do is stop digging. And a lot of people don't do that because for whatever reason, they think they're digging for treasure. No, you're digging your own grave. You are like, think of it as like, um, you're not trying to dig for gold. You're trying to build a sculpture, right? So obviously if you want to build a sculpture, you're just not going to break it down the entire time. So I hope that analogy makes sense. But the questions you want to ask with when it comes to effort is, are you able to progress in load and reps? Are you adding reps? Are you adding load? These are things that are going to be really easy to kind of like measure progress over time in your training. Are you training close to failure? You can artificially increase tonnage and the difficulty of your training if you just use super light weights and do super high reps. But the thing is the actual effectiveness of that is debated and honestly, I just wouldn't want to play with that. Next is, is your strength stable and training upward? So this goes back to recoverability a bit. You need to be able to work hard. You need to be able to press hard. You need to be able to push up against hard weights. But the thing is, you should be able to overcome them as well. So that's why it's really important that you also make sure that you're actually getting stronger. With the natural lifter, getting stronger and getting bigger is going to be almost the same. They're not one in the same. I, like, I don't believe in that one bit. But functionally, practically, they essentially are. So uh, I'll have to like clarify that because I know that's like a contradictory statement and I'm not super satisfied with my presentation of that, but that's the best I can handle at the career moment, okay? Next is, does your split allow you to train hard? So the big issue here with a lot of training splits is just the fact that, let's say you are a strength-focused power builder and you decide to do a push-pull leg. Six times per week, you have six training days, one rest day. The issue here is the fact that strength is very neurological. The fact that you don't have enough rest days to let your neurology recover, you like sure your muscles might be able to recover, but your ability to actually replicate hard efforts will be diminished because you just keep working out too goddamn much for your goal of strength. Now that's why I said like th there's a stipulation, there's a condition, and then you maximize that, right? So that's why I think that's an issue there. And then let's say like, let's look at full body linear based programs. Does your training split allow you to work hard? 
If all you do is add weight over and over and over and over again, sure, you're training hard, but the issue is you're sacrificing future hard work because the issue with these programs is that they have a wall and a plateau built into them and you are trying to reach that plateau as fast as you can. And I don't really like that. And then let's say you are doing an upper lower split, but every single time you do an upper lower, you're basically doing like a max effort day every single time you go into the gym. You are training hard, but you're not able to train hard week in and week out. So that's why you need to kind of like merge the two. It's effort with consistency. So now let's actually look at real training splits. So let me, let me see. I'm going to send myself back because I mean, I don't know if any of you actually like watch me for how I look. I mean, <laughs> probably not like I wouldn't, <laughs> but anyway, so here are some training splits for the strength focused power builder. So one thing that I did here was that I just kind of took the standard powerlifting splits and then made some recommendations for what you should do with it. So this is taken from Ben Pollock. He has a program, a programming series called Unfuck Your Program. So great video series you can watch there. I do think that um, it's very, it's great content, but you probably might need to listen to it multiple times, or at least I did. So just be mindful of that. But I'm here I'm just kind of distilling it and like letting you know what you should do if you are a strength focused power builder right so with a strength focused power builder you're because you are focused on strength you should start with a strength template and go from there it doesn't really make sense to be a strength focused power builder look at a bodybuilding split and think to yourself how do i add strength training and powerlifting to this no you take a powerlifting split and think to yourself in what way can i add bodybuilding without hurting my powerlifting so here we have a four day split you and you start out with squatting once a week, you uh, deadlift once a week, um, and then you bench press twice a week. Now here's the here's the rub. That is the basics power um, powerlifting split. You can start there, and it might work out um, pretty well for like the first couple mesocycles, or the fir first couple like let's say four, eight, twelve weeks you run this, and then let's let's add in some things like on the Monday, like uh, on the Monday you add in. A deadlift variation so on the Monday you do you squat then you do Romanian deadlifts and then on the bench press day you bench but then you add maybe like overhead pressing or incline pressing or weighted dips or something of that nature and then on the deadlift day you do something like leg presses you do something like front squats and then bench press you have a lighter bench press day right so the thing is with the standard powerlifting split there is what you should do here is you want to like add in variables over time you want to add in let me add in a variation. Let me add in a um, more sets, more reps. Let me change the rep ranges. You just want to make these changes subtly and over time because what you want to be doing is you want to make sure that you're actually able to see how do these changes affect your strength. If you're not actually getting stronger with each change, then that change should be dropped in the program. You modify and adjust and it's a long process. Training for yourself and programming for yourself is that long process. Then we want to think about some recommended movement frequency. So when it comes to powerlifting and with a lot of more strength focused programs, what I usually see is a frequency as follows. For the squat, I usually see anywhere between two to three times per week. For the bench, two to four times per week. And for the deadlift, one to two times per week. There are programs that do it more frequently, but they usually do like something with speed work or variations. But here's the thing that I do think that is really important to understand. These recommendations for frequency do not outline progression, meaning your goal is not to go from squatting once a week to three times per week. Your goal is not going from two times per week to four times per week. That is not the goal. It is just the fact that if you have a phase in, of training in which you are prioritizing the bench, you can go up to four times and probably not burn yourself out. Or you can go up to four times and probably make that work. So that's kind of uh, something to think about there. And then finally, when it comes to strength focused splits, they will usually resemble a full body or upper lower program because strength has a neurological component. Strength is not just lifting heavy. It's not just, um, <laughs> it's not just that, okay? So the thing is when, when it comes to your neurology, right? Your nervous system. If your nervous system is not fully recovered and you try to force it to lift a heavy ass load, your nervous system will tell you no. Even if the muscles could handle that load, 
because the, your neurology couldn't, it's not going to let you. So that's why with strength focused programs, they're not super high frequency. You're not going to find a six time per week powerlifting split with the exception of maybe the best in the world who are able to tolerate that high level of training. But generally speaking for like, let's say off season and base building kind of um, prep, you're probably not going to find someone who's training six days per week and training heavy six days per week or even three times per week in that six day split because your nervous system just wouldn't be able to, to handle that. Even if the muscles could recover quickly, your nervous system wouldn't be able to. Now let's look at the size focused power builder. So let me bring myself back. Boom. All right. So for the size focused, size focused, size focused power builder, you have significantly more freedom because hypertrophy is not exclusive to any one split movement or loading parameter. Now, the reason why hypertrophy can benefit from these parameters is the fact that we are human beings and we are limited by time. If we had more than 24 hours in the day, if we didn't have to think about our sleep and recovery and we didn't have to work for a living, then sure, do whatever the hell you want and train as frequently as you want for as long as you want. And like, generally speaking, your hypertrophy results are going to be the same. But the moment you put in that variable of time, now you need to actually be mindful of what is your split like? What is your movement selection like? What is your load selection like? Because we are limited human beings, right? So that's why when it comes to hypertrophy, yes, there is more freedom. But the thing is, just because there's more freedom, just because you now have an infinite amount of choices, that doesn't necessarily mean you have an infinite amount of solutions. There are a limited amount of solutions because you are limited by time. Next, we have training. Uh, so the next thing I want to go over is the fact that training is what stimulates or signals muscle protein synthesis for the natural lifter. So frequency can have usefulness if you are training naturally. Now, I know for a fact, like there's all that uh, literature and research. And honestly, I was kind of the I was in the camp of people who were um, hesitant to accept it. But the thing is, once once something has been shown to be proven, then it would be intellectually dishonest for me to continue to object against it. So, yes, bro splits or body part splits can produce equal amounts of muscle in training. Now, there's obviously arguments made about, let's say, were they novices, how hard were they training, whether like and everything like that, right? But generally speaking, despite regardless of all that, yes, a body part split can build a good amount of muscle, almost as good as amount of muscle, if not more than other splits. But here's the issue. It also comes with downsides. That like just because there is a clear upside to something, you have to also look on the other side of it and figure out, okay, at the cost of what? they are able to build as much muscle at the cost of what? At the cost of doing more volume per workout. If you, you literally have a whole chest day where you do every single chest movement under the sun for all the reps, and then you are so sore that it will take you the rest of the week to recover just so you can hit that workout again. If you split up your training and distribute that, your recovery, you'll be able to recover from session to session, and because you are not entering each movement super fatigued, you're able to give more effort every single time you revisit that muscle. So that's why I recommend that frequency does have a place in hypertrophy training. And also when it comes to the body part split, you're more likely to engage in, in uh, junk volume. You just are. Just because you're going to think to yourself, it's a chest day, but I didn't do this movement. I didn't hit it from this angle. I didn't do that. I didn't do this. And then what's next going to happen? You just do a shit ton of junk volume and you just get sore for no reason and you're not really going to be able to recover from it. And what did I mention earlier? Consistency and effort, sustainability, recoverability. These are things that need to be taken into consideration when choosing the best split for you. Next are going to be my recommendations for hypertrophy. First, train the muscle at least twice per week. And I didn't say movement, I said muscle. So you can have a day where like, this is why like I really like the... Uh, the lift specific approach. So you have a bench press day, a squat day, deadlift day, and overhead press day. On the overhead press day, you do overhead press, dips, and chest flies. That way, like sure, it's the overhead press day is the main heavy movement and you're hitting your delts, but the chest does get worked and it's being worked twice because you have that bench day before and the, there's going to be bench press variations and accessories on that day. So that's, I recommend that you train the muscles at least twice a week and smaller muscles whenever you can, whenever they feel good, whenever you feel recovered. You don't need to have a full 24 hours away from like, let's say side delts or rear delts. Just change up how you use it. So maybe one day you do dumbbells, the next day you do machines, then you do barbells. 
You just mix it up and go from there. So let's see, why did that work? There we go. So when it comes to the size focus training splits, the ones that I recommend will be based on how many days you like to train. If you train three days a week because of let's say your job and other responsibilities, full body training is, is going to be a pretty good way of going about it. You're actually going to hit each muscle at least three times per week. This is like the way I would recommend it here is just hit one movement per muscle group for three sets for five to 10 reps and that's it. That's a really easy way to going about it. That's kind of how the uh, 1950s um, bodybuilders, bodybuilders trained for the most part and just go from there, right? Now you can also do something where let's say you like more exercise variety, you like hitting muscles hard, then you can do something like a upper lower and then a full body day. So this is a good way to kind of go about it there. So that way on one day you get a great ass pump on the upper and lower body and then full body just to kind of make sure you hit both and you go and, that, and that's good. That's what I would recommend. If I ever did a full three day split again, I would probably do something like that. Next would be push pull legs. This is kind of like, like you, if you do a, this is kind of like push pull legs in a three day split is you, basically you are going from a bo, uh, bro split, but for whatever reason, maybe you got a new job and you love the bro split, but now you can't do it anymore. So now you do push pull leg and you do it for three days. Not my favorite split, but it, it can work. You know what I'm saying? Like for hypertrophy, you get more freedom. So that's something that can work. Not my recommend, like not my like first choice, but it works. So I'll recommend it. Four day splits, full body two times per week, followed by an upper lower. That's basically just like building upon what we mentioned earlier. And then the next one, an upper lower split. The upper lower split is like my personal bias when it comes to programming, just because I think that it can, it has so much flexibility to it, but at the same time, it still allows you to train hard every single session and recover. That's what I usually um, find whenever I put clients on that split and whenever I run it personally. Next would be a push pull legs and full body. So it's basically the push pull leg split from the three day split, but now you're adding that full body day just so you're able to get that two times per week training recommendation. And then the, the lift specific split, which is kind of like a modified upper lower, you have a squat day plus accessories, a bench press day plus accessories, deadlift and overhead press. So on the squat day, maybe you'll do squats, rows, and then a bunch of other quad and hamstring work. On the bench press day, you'll do bench, uh, some chest work, some chin ups, and go from there. On the deadlift day, you'll do like deadlift, leg press, and a bunch of other lower body and like yoke work, so traps, shrugs, and stuff of like that nature. And then you have the overhead press day where you do overhead press, dips, and chest flies, and boom, great split right there. Now, when it goes to the five day split, I do think the upper um, upper lower push pull leg is all right. And then also, I do like the upper lower with the addition of an arm day. So you do upper lower, upper lower arms. You can mix it up, like maybe like a lower upper arms. Um, the thing that you want to make sure that you do there is the fact that the arm day should come at the end of the week and not in between. At least that's my personal recommendation, just because you don't want to, um, you don't want that to become a limiting factor, but you can test it out. You can definitely like, it's not like a hard rule that if you do it like that, you're going to under recover and then you're going to suffer. No, it's not like that. Just, just my recommendation. Just if you don't have to mod make that modification, just, I wouldn't play with it. And then finally, like an Arnold split. So I might've gotten it wrong, but I think it's chest and back, delts and arms. I think another one was like delts and legs and then an actual just straight up arm day. But honestly, I think this makes more sense. You have a chest and back and maybe you split it up with a leg day and then you do delts and arms or actually no, chest and back, delts and arms because um, you don't want to go into your next chest and back day with fatigued arms. So I would do it that way instead. Um, but yeah, so those are my general recommendations for the training split. One thing you'll notice is I didn't include the six day split just because it's not my preferred way to train. They are six way, six day training splits that you can do, such as the push pull split three times per week. So push is quads, chest, shoulders, and triceps. Pull is biceps, biceps, backs, and hamstring. That's the six day split, um, push pull legs. Not my favorite split. It can work, but generally speaking, that's for me, I consider the push pull leg a straight up bodybuilding split. Uh, I don't really consider it all that much useful for strength development. That's just my personal opinion. Um, just because with strength training, with all the things that you're um, manipulating, I don't think that you're getting all that much out of the fact that you're training six days versus like, let's say four, three or five. So those would be the ones that I recommend on the six day split, but there's a bunch of other ones that you can definitely think of. But like I said, any split you do can be valid if it matches the criteria of everything else we mentioned today. So when you are making your own split, Take that into consideration, do with this information as you will, and then you will produce a split that you're able to um, be consistent with, progress on, and that's what is most important. 
more than anything else is those two things. Are you able to work consistently and are you able to apply great effort? Because if you do those two things, you will be stronger, you will be bigger. So just focus on that, all right? That's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Carlos the King, stanstrength.com. If you like the shirt that I'm wearing, this is available on my website. This is the idealist logo. Basically means that you are trying to, like for me, per perfection and progress just means progressively realizing a worthy ideal. So it's loving yourself, but also loving who you could be and working hard at that every single day. And that's why the logo is designed as it is. And also I'm just a weeb. And if you know Jojo, then you know where this, uh, where I took inspiration for this logo. So if you do like the shirt, it is available on website. If you would like to work with me and have um, me as a coach, then that is available on website as well. I also do custom workout programs, which includes micro coaching, just so that way we can refine the program over time to match your goals. And then if you are interested in, let's say, getting um, your own logo made, then you can check out my guy, Saul David Clavano on Instagram. And yeah, I would, I would really appreciate that. Great guy, great designer, uh, and he does great work. So um, thank you so much for watching. Hope you liked the video. Please like, comment, subscribe. I really appreciate all the support. It's so amazing to me that I'm able to have um, 300 subs. And thank you so much for everyone who watches the channel and watches these videos. So have a great day. Uh, I know the video was late this week, <laughs> these past two weeks. I am aiming to have a release schedule of Wednesdays and Thursdays, but it's just um, taking a while to figure out. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. And I do hope that you find something on the, my website that, you, that interests you, whether it be merch or coaching. So have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.